So today we're going to get into Acts 15. We're going to see what happened there and what the apostles and the elders had to say about uh, the events of Acts 15. And we will delve a little bit into Acts 21 because it's, it's related. Uh, we'll see if we talk about 22, 23 uh, also. I was thinking, though, that it may be a good idea also to discuss some of the Old Testament laws and just get into it a little bit. Now, that's not going to happen now, but maybe in a future presentation, uh, we'll discuss a few of the major feasts and things like that. Um, not really as a, a, a rebuke of the law teachers anymore, but just for education and uplifting. I, I am not deceived in thinking I can convince those who, are, who may not be called to understand what God is doing in this world. It's the work of the Holy Spirit that will lead you unto all truth. Okay, so for those who have, have an ear to hear, for those who are led by the Holy Spirit, they already understand about salvation and that salvation is through faith in Christ. Okay, so uh, the, the message of Christ and the message of his apostles was easily received by the Gentiles, as scripture has said it would. So they would receive it and Israel would not. I do see that uh, there appears to be in the world of man uh, the, the sins of the father being passed down. And they inherit these traits of their elders, of their fathers. And I see that in Israel. I see that in the Gentiles, right? Uh, the Gentiles have no empathy or sympathy for Israel. Uh, and it's passed down uh, through the bloodline, apparently. Um, and it's a weird thing. Uh, same thing for Israel. You know, 400 years in captivity in Israel goes back to the ways of their elders. Um, and, and that's really strange. It's really puzzling to me how after 400 years in captivity, <laughs> we're dealing with the same issues of the Old Testament. I mean, of the New Testament. The Pharisees and Sadducees were keepers of the laws of Moses, right? And so we have to ask ourselves, why did they have a problem with Jesus? Why did they have a problem with his apostles? Obviously, there was a communication issue. There was a understanding that the elders and the Pharisees and Sadducees could not understand. The scribes could not understand. So we're entering to a time where God has tried to reveal to the people of the world this, this, the truth of his spirit, right? Uh, the carnal man is not even able to understand those things of the spirit of God. And so that's the problem we have. And so we see today the Israelites, many of them, having a sense of hostility toward their fellow brothers and sisters. Um, they curse out the Gentiles and they curse out their women. And it's strange uh, that they do such things when after being in 400 years of captivity and the Lord is coming to set them free that they should be worshiping him with everything they have and they should be praising him them with everything they have and they don't understand that after 400 years of captivity we have gone back to being just like our elders and our leaders the Sadducees and Pharisees we're, we're acting just like them if you look at the scriptures right and so the apostles were persecuted for teaching the truth that they did not understand although as Paul said in Acts I am teaching the teachings of our fathers. I am teaching the teachings of the prophets. And I'm not guilty of anything. I am teaching what has been fulfilled by Christ. And so the elders and the Sadducees and Pharisees and the people of Israel wanted to kill Paul in Acts 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. 
they were interested in killing Paul. They didn't succeed, but they were interested in killing Paul. It was an opportunity for Paul to express the truth of the matter. But uh, let's look at Acts 15 and, and see what it says. And as I always say to those of you who, who understand or who, who's trying to learn, uh, take the Lord literally, take his scriptures literally, take his writings literally, keep it simple. If you're talking to your father and your father says, don't put that fork in the socket in the wall, you won't put that fork in the socket of the wall. Hey, why, Father? Why shouldn't I put the, the fork into the, the socket, the wall socket, the outlet? Because you're going to get electrocuted and it could kill you. Okay, I won't do that. It's as simple as that, right? When the Father says it, believe it as it is said. Um, many of you won't do that, but I mean, the message of Christ was never received by Israel like it should. It was received by the Gentiles with all gladness and happiness and love. But Israel did not receive the message of Christ with joy. And so even though many of God's people today, many Israelites accept Christ, they have a tendency to do what their elders did. They still go back to the laws of Moses. And yet, the Sadducees and Pharisees were found wanting. They were found, found lacking. They rejected their Messiah. They killed their Messiah. And so went into captivity. They were destroyed by Rome. They were scattered. And have been, and them and their descendants have been in captivity ever since. So it's just puzzling. But, okay, let's, uh, get into Acts 15 and let's discuss this and once again I think I'm going to use the CEV version right because it's this simple English and once again I ask you know I make a request that you verify this against the King James Version if you have any issues with the CEV version make sure that the King James Version is your standard. So that's what I do. Okay. The King James Version is my standard. Okay. I use the other versions for clarity. If the other versions conflict with what I believe that the King James is saying, then I reject the other translations. You'll find in most cases, though, that the interpretation was all pretty accurate. Okay. Now, there are, in, in some cases, and especially the NIV, the NIV has some big issues, right? So you got to be really careful with that. But concerning some of the day-to-day -day translations, the everyday translations of these scriptures, it puts things in like in common English so that you can understand them. So just verify it against King James if you have an issue with it. But I'm going to use CEV. Okay, so let's go. So here is the... CE the version or common English version of X15. Okay, and so this should settle the issue for many of you, right, concerning how Christ expects us to behave and walk today according to what the apostles understood we should do, right? Those apostles were sent out by Christ himself. They represent Christ. And so the message that the world understands as so-called Christianity, right, the gospel message, is the teaching of Christ and his apostles. Now, you have various denominations, and each denomination comes up with their own additional things. They add to the practices of Christianity let's say, which is not biblical. There's a lot of things they've added, right? But they did receive the message of Christ. They did receive his gospel message with all gladness and joy, as Scripture said they would, whereas Israel did not. Okay, so the apostles went out to teach 
the world about Christ. And Peter and Paul specifically were sent to teach the Gentiles. Now, for those of you who say Gentiles are Hebrews who rejected, you know, the teachings of the elders, uh, I, I'm not going to get into that. That's just ridiculous. The Gentiles are those who are not Israelites. Okay, period. So let's begin. Some people came from Judea and started teaching the Lord's followers that they could not be saved unless they were circumcised as Moses had taught. This caused trouble, and Paul and Barnabas argued with them about this teaching. So that seems familiar, right? We're doing the same thing. We're arguing, arguing with you guys, many of you, about that same teaching. So it was decided to send Paul and Barnabas and a few others to Jerusalem to discuss this problem with the apostles and the church leaders. The men who were sent by the church went through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling how the Gentiles had turned to God. This news made the Lord's followers very happy. When the men arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church, including the apostles and the leaders. They told them everything God had helped them do. But some Pharisees had become followers of the Lord. They stood up and said, Gentiles who have faith in the Lord must be circumcised and told to obey the laws of Moses. The apostles and church leaders met to discuss this problem about Gentiles. They had talked it over for a long time when Peter got up and said, my friends, you know that God decided long ago to let me be the one from your group to preach the good news to the Gentiles. God did this so that they would hear and obey him. He knows what it is, what, what is in everyone's heart. And he showed that he had chosen the Gentiles when he gave them the Holy Spirit, just as he had given his spirit to us. Now, you know, some camps actually said we don't have the Holy Spirit yet. That's a future thing. But obviously you see that the church has the Holy Spirit today. Right? God treated them in the same way that he treated us. They put their faith in him and he made their hearts pure. Now, why are you trying to make God angry by placing a heavy burden on these followers? This burden was too heavy for us or our ancestors. So Peter said, we couldn't keep it. Our ancestors couldn't keep it. Why are you putting this burden on them and they already have the Holy Spirit? What's up with that? Okay. But our, but our Lord Jesus was kind to us and we are saved by faith in him just as Gentiles are. <laughs> okay, you know, these camps think we have it wrong. They think we're teaching incorrectly, but I mean, it's right here, written black and white. And so all I can do is show you what scripture says, correct? Let's continue. Everyone kept quiet and listened as Barnabas and Paul told how God had given them the power to work a lot of miracles and wonders for the Gentiles. After they had finished speaking, James said, my friends, listen to me. Simon Peter has told how God first came to the Gentiles and made some of them his own people. This agrees with what the prophets wrote. I, the Lord, will return and rebuild David's fallen house. I will build it from its ruins and set it up again. Then other nations will turn to me and be my chosen ones. I, the Lord, say this. I promised it long ago. And so, my friends, I don't think we should place burdens on the Gentiles who are turning to God. We should simply write and tell them not to eat anything that was that has been offered to idols. They should be told not to eat the meat of any animal that has been strangled or that still has blood in it. They must not commit any terrible sexual sins. We must remember that the law 
of Moses has been preached in city after city for many years. And every Sabbath it is read when we Jews meet. The apostles, the leaders, and all the church members decided to send some men to Antioch along with Paul and Barnabas. They chose Silas and Judas Barsabbas, who were two leaders of the Lord's followers. They wrote a letter that said, We apostles and leaders send friendly greetings to all of you Gentiles who are followers of the Lord in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. We have heard that some people from here have terribly upset you by what they said, but we did not send them. So we met together and decided to choose some men and to send them to you along with our good friend Barnabas and Paul. These men have risked their lives for our Lord Jesus Christ. We have also, we are also sending Judas and Silas who will tell you in person the same thing that we are writing. The Holy Spirit has shown us that we should not place any extra burden on you, but you should not eat anything offered to idols. You should not eat any meat that still has the blood in it or any meat of any animal that has been strangled. You must also not commit any terrible sexual sins. If you follow these instructions, you will do well. We send our best wishes. The four men left Jerusalem and went to Antioch. Then they called the church members together and gave them the letter. When the letter was read, everyone was pleased and greatly encouraged. Judas and Silas were prophets, and they spoke a long time, encouraging and helping the Lord's followers. The men from Jerusalem stayed on in Antioch for a while, and when they left to return to the ones who had sent them, the followers wished them well, but Paul and Barnabas stayed on in Antioch where they had many others taught and preached about the Lord. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit the Lord's followers in the cities where we preached his message. Then we will know how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take along John, whose other name was Mark, but Paul did not want to because Mark had left them in Pamph Pamphylia and had stopped working with them. Paul and Barnabas argued, then each of them went his own way. Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, but Paul took Silas and left after the followers had placed them in good ca God's care. They traveled through Syria and Cilicia, encouraging the church. Okay, so that's Acts 15. And you see the issue that we're dealing with today. And it's here again, this same issue. Surely you must obey the laws of Moses and be circumcised. And circumcision actually represents the covenant between Moses and Israel. I mean, between God, Moses, and Israel, right? That's, that's, that's the uh, sim symbol of the covenant. And so Israel... Some of the leaders has said you got to be circumcised to be saved right you have to obey the laws of moses to be saved and what did the apostles say we did not send these guys to you we did not teach that okay so i would encourage you to first believe the scriptures as written and believe those who christ sent which are his apostles. Now, just for clarity, the book of Acts was written by Luke, according to most experts. So Luke has proven, one, that the apostles accepted Paul, that the apostles were in agreement with Paul's teachings concerning the laws of Moses. Okay? So, Paul has been supported and backed by the apostles in Acts 15. And you can see in other uh, passages as well, in, in other uh, chapters in Acts. So I want to move on to Acts 21. And I may or may not go past that, but we'll see. Let's look at that. 
So here's Acts 21 CEV version. And as I said, be King James if you want to. I'm just making it easier for some of you guys to avoid the confusion. Um, after saying goodbye, we sailed straight to Chaos. The next day, we reached Rhodes. From there, sailed on to Patara. We found a ship going to Phoenicia. So we got on board and sailed off. We came within sight of Cyprus and then sailed south of it on to the port of Tyre in Syria, where the ship was going to unload its cargo. We looked up the Lord's followers and stayed with them for a week. The Holy Spirit had told them to warn Paul not to go to Jerusalem. But when the week was over, we started on our way again. All the men together with their wives and children walked with us from the town to the seashore. We knelt on the beach and prayed. Then after saying goodbye to each other, we got into the ship and they went back home. We sailed from Tyre to Ptolemaeus, where we greeted the followers and stayed with them for a day. We sailed from Tyre to Ptolemaeus. Oh, sorry. The next day, we went to Caesarea and stayed with Philip, the preacher. He was one of the seven men who helped the apostles, and he had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. We had been in Caesarea for several days when the prophet Agabus came to us from Judea. He took Paul's belt and with it, he tied up his own hands and feet. Then he told us, the Holy Spirit says that some of the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will tie up the man who owns this belt. They will also hand him over to the Gentiles. After Agabus said this, we and the followers living there begged Paul not to go to Jerusalem. But Paul answered, why are you crying and breaking my heart? I am not only willing to be put in jail for the Lord Jesus, I am even willing to die for him in Jerusalem. Paul said, don't take this opportunity for me to die for Christ. I want to. Since we could not get Paul to change his mind, we gave up and prayed. Lord, please make us willing to do what you want. Then we got ready to go to Jerusalem. Some of the followers from Caesarea went with us and took us to stay in the home of Nason. He was from Cyprus and had been a follower from the beginning. When we arrived in Jerusalem, the Lord's followers gladly welcomed us. Paul went with us to see James the next day, and all the church leaders were present. Paul greeted them and told how God had used him to help the Gentiles. Everyone who heard this praised God and said to Paul, My friend, you can see how many tens of thousands of the Jewish people have become followers, and all of them are eager to obey the laws of Moses. But they, but they have been told that you are teaching those who live among the Gentiles to disobey this law. They claim that you are telling them not to circumcise their sons or to follow Jewish customs. What should we do now that our people have heard that you are here? Please do what we ask, because four of our men have made special promises to God. Join with them and prepare yourself for the ceremony that goes with the promises. Pay the cause for their heads to be shaven. Then everyone will learn that the reports about you are not true. They will know that you do obey the law of Moses. Some while ago, we told the Gentile followers what we think they should do. We instructed them not to eat anything or offered to idols. They were told not to eat any meat with blood still in it or the meat of an animal that has been strangled. They were also told not to commit any terrible sexual sins. The next day, Paul took the four men with him and got himself ready at the same time they did. Then he went into the temple and told when the final ceremony would take place and when an offering would be made for each of them. When the period of seven days for the ceremony was almost over, some of the Jewish people from Asia saw Paul in the temple. They got a large crowd together and started attacking him. 
They were shouting, friends, help us. This man goes around everywhere saying bad things about our nation and about the law of Moses and about this temple. He has even brought shame to this holy temple by bringing in Gentiles. Some of them thought that Paul had brought Trophimus from Ephesus into the temple because they had seen them together in the city. The whole city was in an uproar and the people turned into a mob. They grabbed Paul and dragged him out of the temple. Then suddenly the doors were shut. The people were about to kill Paul when the Roman army commander heard that all Jerusalem was starting to riot. So he quickly took some soldiers and officers and ran to where the crowd had gathered. As soon as the mob saw the commander and soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. The army commander went over and arrested him and had him bound with two chains. Then he tried to find out who Paul was and what he had done. <laughs> it seemed like uh, American police. Oh, let's arrest the guy that's getting beat. <laughs> let's arrest him, right? Part of the crowd shouted one thing and part of them shouted something else, but they were making so much noise that the commander could not find out a thing. Then he ordered Paul to be taken into the fortress. As they reached the steps, the crowd became so wild that the soldiers had to lift Paul up and carry him. The crowd followed and kept shouting, kill him, kill him. When Paul was about to be taken into the fortress, he asked the commander, can I say something to you? How do you know Greek? The commander asked. Aren't you that Egyptian who started a riot not long ago and led 4,000 terrorists into the desert? No, Paul replied, I am a Jew from Tarsus, an important city in Cilicia. Please let me speak to the crowd. The commander told him he could speak, so Paul st stood on the steps and mentioned to the people when they were quiet. He spoke to them in Aramaic or Hebrew. Um, let's go to chapter 22. We're going to keep going a little bit. My friends and leaders of our nation, listen and I explain what happened. When the crowd heard Paul speak to them in Hebrew, which is what King James says, so I'm going to say that for that, right? In Hebrew, they became even quieter. Then Paul said, I am a Jew, born and raised in the city of Tarsus in Cilicia. I was a student of Gamaliel and was taught to follow every single law of our ancestors. In fact, I was just as eager to obey God as any of you are today. He said, I love the law. I followed the law. I believed in the teachings of our people. Okay, I made trouble for everyone who followed the law's way. And I even had some of them killed. I had others arrested and put in jail. I didn't care if they were men or women. He said, I was just like you. I was out here killing God's people because I didn't know who they were. I was committed to the ways of our fathers and the laws of Moses. And I slaughtered people for this very belief. Because I am what? A Jew of Jews, a Pharisee of the Pharisee. Paul was like, I am highly educated. I knew the scriptures inside and out. According to the teachings of our elders, I know this thing. And I persecuted Christ's people for this very fact. But yet he was wrong. But let's continue. The high priest and all of the council members can tell you that this is true. They even gave me letters to the Jewish leaders in Damascus so that I could arrest people there and bring them to Jerusalem to be punished. One day about noon, I was getting close to Damascus when a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around me. I fell to the ground and I heard a voice asking, Saul, Saul, why are you so cruel to me? Who are you? I answered. The Lord replied, I am Jesus from Nazareth. I am the one you are so cruel to. The men who were traveling with me saw the light but did not hear the voice. I asked, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then he told me, get up, Go to Damascus. When you get there, you will be told what to do. The light had been so bright that I couldn't see. And the other men had to lead me by the hand to Damascus. In that city, there was a man named Ananias who faithfully obeyed the laws of Moses and was well liked by all the Jewish people living there. 
He came to me and said, Saul, my friend, you are now, you can now see again. At once I could see. Then Ananias told me, the God that our ancestors worship has chosen you to know what he wants done. He has chosen you to see the one who obeys God and to hear his voice. You must tell everyone what you have seen and heard. So Paul was commissioned by God himself, by Jesus himself, to send and share the message that he has shared. So those of you who don't like Paul, you don't like God because God sent him. Okay. Now this is Acts, which is written by Luke. What are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash away your sins by praying to the Lord. After this, I returned to Jerusalem and went to the temple to pray. There I had a vision of the Lord who said to me, hurry and leave Jerusalem. The people won't listen to what you, have, what you say about me. I replied, Lord, they know that in many of our meeting places, I, I arrested and beat people who had faith in you. Stephen was killed because he spoke for you, and I stood there and cheered them on. I even guarded the clothes of the men who murdered him. But the Lord told me to go, and he promised to send me far away to the Gentiles. The crowd listened until Paul said this. Then they started shouting, get rid of this man. He doesn't deserve to live. They kept shouting. They waved their clothes around and threw dust in in the air. The Roman commander ordered Paul to be taken into the fortress and beaten with a whip. He did this to find out why the people are screaming at Paul. <laughs> Seemed like our police. While the soldiers were tying Paul up to beat him, he asked the officer standing there, is it legal to beat a Roman citizen before he has been tried in court? When the officer heard this, he went to the commander and said, what are you doing? This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked, tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, Paul answered. The commander then said, I paid a lot of money to become a Roman citizen. Paul replied, I was born a Roman citizen. The men who were about to beat and question Paul quickly backed off. And the commander himself was frightened when he realized that he had put a Roman citizen in chains. Huge consequence for persecuting a Roman citizen without going through due process. Even America doesn't uh, care about that. The next day, the commander wanted to know the real reason why the Jewish leaders had brought charges against Paul, so he had Paul's chains removed, and he ordered the chief priest and the whole council to meet. Then he had Paul led in and made him stand in front of them. Okay, I'm going to go to 23, probably stop after this one. Paul looked straight at the council members and said, My friends, to this day I have served God with a clear conscience. Then Ananias, the high priest, ordered the men standing beside Paul to hit him on the mouth. Paul turned to the high priest and said, You whitewashed wall, God will hit you. You sit there to judge me by the law of Moses. But at the same time, you order men to break the law by hitting me. <laughs> Hypocrite. Hypocrite. The men standing beside Paul asked, don't you know you are insulting God's high priest? Paul replied, oh, I didn't know he was the high priest. The scriptures do tell us not to speak evil about a leader of our people. When Paul saw that some of the council members were Sadducees and others were Pharisees. He shouted, my friends, I am a Pharisee and the son of a Pharisee. I am on trial simply because I believe that the dead will be raised to life. As soon as Paul said this, the Pharisees and Sadducees got into a big argument and the council members started taking sides. The Sadducees do not believe in angels or spirits or that the dead will rise to life. But the Pharisees believe in all of these, and so there was a lot of shouting. Some of the teachers of the law of Moses were Pharisees. Finally, they became angry and said, we don't find anything wrong with this man. 
maybe a spirit or an angel really did speak to him. <laughs> so he divided the Sadducees and Pharisees on their own doctrine. The argument became fierce and the commander was afraid that Paul would be pulled apart. So he ordered the soldiers to go in and rescue Paul. Then they took him back into the fortress. That night, the Lord stood beside Paul and said, don't worry, just as you have told others about me in Jerusalem, you must also tell about me in Rome. The next morning, more than 40 Jewish men got together and vowed that they would not eat or drink anything until they had killed Paul. Then some of them went to the chief priests and the nation leaders and said, we have promised God that we would not eat a thing until we have killed Paul. You and everyone in the council must go to the commander and pretend that you want to find out more about the charges against Paul. Ask for him to be brought before your court. Meanwhile, we will be waiting to kill him before he gets there. When Paul's nephew heard about the plot, he went to the fortress and told Paul about it. So Paul said to one of the army officers, take this young man to the commander. He has something to tell, tell him. The officer took him to the commander and said, the prisoner named Paul asked me to bring you, bring this young man to you because he has something to tell you. The commander took the young man aside and asked him in private, what do you want to tell me? He answered, some men are planning to ask you to bring Paul down to the Jewish council tomorrow. They will claim that they want to find out more about him, but please don't do what they say. More than 40 men are going to attack Paul. They have made a vow not to eat or drink anything until they have killed him. Even now, they are waiting to hear what you decide. The commander sent the young man away after saying to him, don't let anyone know that you told me this. The commander called in two of his officers and told them, by nine o'clock tonight, have 200 soldiers ready to go to Caesarea. Take along 70 men on horseback and 200 foot soldiers with spears. Get a horse ready for Paul and make sure that he gets safely through to Felix the governor. The commander wrote a letter and said, Greetings from Claudius Lysias to the Honorable Governor Felix. Some Jews grabbed this man and were about to kill him. But when I found out that he was a Roman citizen, I took some soldiers and rescued him. I wanted to find out what they had against him, so I brought him before their council and learned that the charges concerned only their religious laws. This man isn't guilty of anything for which he should die or even put in jail. As soon as I learned that there was a plot against him, I sent him to you and told their leaders to bring charges against him in your court. The soldiers obeyed the commander's orders, and that same night they took Paul to the city of Antipatris. The next day the foot soldiers returned to the fortress and let the soldiers on horseback take him the rest of the way. When they came to Caesarea, they gave the letter to the governor and handed Paul over to him. To him. The governor read the letter, then he asked Paul and found out that he was from Cilicia. The governor said, I will listen to your case as soon as the people come to bring their charges against you. After saying this, he gave orders for Paul to be kept as a prisoner in Herod's palace. I'm going to stop there. You can continue on reading uh, what happened to Paul. Okay. It's very interesting. They don't, they don't successfully kill him uh, this day, but uh, you see that they were raging over Paul's teachings. They accused him of not teaching that he they accused him of teaching against the laws of Moses. And they wanted to murder him for it. Um, you have to understand that Israel rejected Christ. Israel rejected uh, his apostles and their teachings, even though Christ fulfilled everything that was written in the Old Testament. Right. As Christ said, you read those scriptures and in them it speaks of me. So Israel doesn't understand that the Old Testament was about Christ himself. So they think that they are supposed to behave like the Muslims, right? These traditions, right? Even though I suspect the Muslims in their own way tried to copy the traditions of Israel, right? They wanted to be seen of men when 
the Old Testament was put in place as a placeholder for Christ, right? So the system, sacrificial system was put in place, right? Where you sacrifice an animal that was unblemished, right? They sacrificed him. He had to have these specific qualities about him to be sacrificed. You couldn't just grab any old lamb, any old uh, calf and sacrifice them. You couldn't just grab any old animal. They had to meet certain criteria. They had to be unblemished, right? And so that was the placeholder for Christ because he had not come yet. Okay, now after Christ came and died, what did Christ do? He fulfilled the law, as scripture talks about. The law had requirements. You do this, you do this, you do this. If you do not successfully do these things, you will die. Christ successfully did those things. Christ was without sin. He was worthy to be the lamb. He was a lamb without spot or blemish. Thus, he was worthy to die for the world. So, this is the message that went to the Gentiles because Israel rejected their Messiah. So, the truth of God's will for mankind and the truth of God's will for Israel went to the Gentiles. So, Today, Israel is mad at the teachings of the Gentiles when they teach the gospel. Now, when they deviate from the gospel, you do not follow them. As scripture says, as Paul said, follow me only as I follow Christ. If I don't follow Christ, don't follow me. Okay, this applies to the teachings of the Christian church. Follow them as far as they follow and line up with the word of God, the New Testament teachings of Christ and his apostles. Follow them only as long as they are in line with scripture. And when they start to deviate with all kinds of strange things that are not supported with scripture, you don't follow them. Okay, now the apostles were hunted and killed. They were murdered and persecuted for the teachings of Christ and the gospel message. So I don't expect Israel to accept what I'm saying. There's something happening that we don't fully understand where, I mean, God has known us from before we were born from the foundation of the world. He knows who's going to be his and who loves him and who wants to serve him. So God knows who you are. But scripture says there are few who enter into the kingdom because the path is narrow. Well, how narrow is that path? It's so narrow that very few find it. And so... We are called to enter in through the straight and narrow way, which is faith in Christ. This is the teaching of Christ apostles. This is the teaching of the new covenant. That salvation is a gift of God through faith. So the laws of Moses are no more. The laws of Moses were a placeholder until Christ came and fulfilled the law. So these are spiritual concepts. These are truths that only someone with the Holy Ghost can receive and understand. Or those who have a, a hunger for the Lord to where he will give them his Holy Spirit and allow them to understand. Not everyone is called to understand. As Paul said, if you do not understand these teachings, then it is because you are lost. So not everyone is called. Even Israel, even though you are waking up to your nationality, not everyone is called. So you have to see that God is the most amazing being ever. 
And because he had mercy on you, because he said, my daughter, my son, I forgive you. Sin no more. Follow me. That was your instructions. To sin no more. To follow him. In all things. Follow his son. And you will be saved. You will have faith in him. Because he is the first of many. And he set the example. So God showed you in the new covenant. The new testament. How he expects you to walk. Right, because if you follow the laws, like we follow the laws of America or of the world, because we don't want to go to prison. So, because I don't steal or don't rob some bank, because I'm I'm doing those things, does that make me a good person? No, because you don't know my heart. Right, it's my heart that makes me a good person. It's what's in me. It's how I look toward my fellow man. It's, it's whether or not I have hate and animosity toward people. When God is trying to forgive them and extend mercy, God is saying whoever will come in while the door is open. And Israel is saying, y'all, certain people can't come in. Y'all not allowed. It ain't for you. When Israel was kicked out. And now God's having mercy on Israel and saying, come on back in, my child. And Israel saying, OK, all statutes and commandments. And the Lord's like. I just extended mercy to you. I showed you that you were worthy of death and I love you so much that I am giving you a way back. And Israel is like, no, statutes and commandments. Right. Just like that guy who says I. I don't rob a bank because if, if I robbed the bank, I would get caught and go to jail. That's not a good guy. That's somebody that's trying to stay out of jail. But the person that said, I wouldn't rob a bank if it was legal. Because it's not who I am. I won't take from someone something that's not mine. God's looking for those people who have a heart for goodness, a heart for righteousness. A, a, a person who sees Another person as his brother who looks at a hurting individual and, learn, and has the ability to simply have sympathy or empathize with that person. See, that's a problem the Gentiles have too toward Israel. And I think it's a curse, right? A generational curse where of their forefathers where they look at Israel and Israel gets shot unarmed in the street and they will do everything to support the murderer. They will do everything to, to point the finger at an Israelite. Right? The Gentile will look at him and say, Israel says, our lives matter. You shouldn't kill us without due process. And then they say, all lives matter. Well, nobody's talking about all lives. You killing us and we telling you we want justice. But they can't hear it and they can't see it. And all of a sudden we wrong for taking the knee, demanding that you don't kill our men or our women. But they can't see it. That's a judgment on them. God has hardened their hearts. So the time of the Gentiles is coming to an end because their their hearts is their heart is allowed to be hardened because the time of the Gentiles is ending. And they're going to reap what they have sown. They are going to reap the judgments of the sins of them and their forefathers. Just as Israel for 400 plus years reaped the, the judgment of the sins of their forefathers. So, but I see the same thing with many Israelites that they cannot see that God, how to walk in love, right? Even though Isaiah 60 says when it's all said and done, the remaining, those who are remaining as Israelites are walking in the power of God and walking in the power of his love and his grace and his Holy Spirit. They're walking in that power so, so powerfully that the world can see who the true Israelites are. Right. Isaiah 60 shows you. The people today, the way Israel heart is, you can't tell that they are children of the one who calls himself love but something's coming today something's coming soon where israel will be changed right not 
all of them because scripture also says some of the Israelites are rebels and we be, will be dealt with. But many of the Israelites, even some of you who are on the wrong path, will begin to understand the truth of this message and the truth of the gospel and turn to Christ and understand that you are to love him with all your heart, mind, and soul. And because you love him with all your heart, mind, and soul, you also love your neighbor as yourself. And so because you love your neighbor as yourself and love the Father with all your heart, mind, and soul, which are the two greatest commandments in the new covenant, you begin to have love for everyone. And so carnal Israel today don't understand how to walk in love. Right? They say the Gentiles are going to hell. They say all the Gentiles can't be saved. When Christ says he died for the world. So for you who have an ear to hear, get closer and intimate with God, just like you would a new relationship. Right? If you're a man and you fell in love with this woman and she treats you good, right? Because God treats us good, you fall in love with her. You want to give her everything, you want to treat her as a queen. And you women who fall in love with a man who does everything for you and treats you good, you continue. You grow in love with him. You are committed to him. You restrain yourself from interacting with other men because you love him. You don't commit adultery like Israel did to the father. Right? You don't do those things. Why? Because you love that person. This is why there's such a thing as a father and a mother and a male and a female. God could have created amoebas. We could have been self-producing beings, but he created a male and female so that you can see what it means to love someone else unconditionally. Agape love. Right? Because this is who God is. God is love. And he loves you so much that he will also have justice. And he will judge those who have done wickedly against you, Israel. But in the end, even they are going to be set free after their captivity. After the Gentiles go into captivity, right? Over, to, you know, at the end of their captivity, they will be set free. And they will enter into the rest of God, those who have learned to love Christ and follow him. This is the gospel. I'm sorry if you don't like the message of God's love, right? You want to teach law, statutes, and commandments all you want to, but God is showing you what love is. And God is showing you how to love him. And he's showing you that he's worthy of your love and your commitment, right? He's showing you that he is the most awesome being ever and that you should be madly in love with him. Because Jesus said, if you love your mother, father, daughter, even yourself more than him. You are not worthy of him. That's a high standard. That's a high standard for anyone. You are called to love the Father more than yourself. How many of you can say that? That's the standard, and it's a high one, that you have to love God that much. And if you love him that much, you also have to love your brother that much, and you have to be willing to forgive your brothers and your sisters that much. That is the end result of Israel in Isaiah 60. Is that they have to walk in love. This is who you are called to be. So you're excited that you have found out that you're the true Israelite. And it's a good thing because God still loves you. And God promised that he will restore you to the land. God said he was going to keep his promise to make you a great people. He said that that land was for you forever. So when the Gentiles say that it's no longer yours, they are misled or lying. Because the land was promised to you forever. And, and this is the standard. And God's going to make the truth known to the world. Because God keeps his word. And so... The world will recognize that God is God and he shall be glorified. He's not sharing his glory with y'all. He's not sharing his glory with the Gentiles. 
if you don't understand it's all about him, you have a long way to go. You have to really bow the knee. If you were in hell right now, this second, and the father came down there and pulled you out and brought you into his kingdom, you would worship him then. You would be so in love with him then. Because if you were experiencing hell, you'd be like, I'm here forever. Oh, I'm suffering unimaginably. unimaginably. And then he, Christ comes and takes you out of hell and brings you into his kingdom. You're going to be worshiping him like you don't know what. You're going to be so in love and excited with him. He gonna be, he'd have to say, leave me alone. Right? If he wanted that. You are drowning me in so much love. Take a break. That's how you would treat him. Even though that's how you should treat him. Right? Overpouring, overshadowing him with all your love and worship. But if he had pulled you out of hell, you would totally get it. Okay, so that's that's the end of this message. And as I said, you know, I will address a few of these laws and I'll show you. Oh, let me put this out there. Okay. And this is for all you camp followers or law keepers. I want you I, I put this out there in my comments over and over again and no one has taken the challenge so I said this list all the laws that you keep how you're keeping them in detail list the laws that you are not keeping and list the reasons why you are not keeping them so I still would like you to do that anyone that wants to take up that challenge because you're gonna see first of all you know, you already know what the, it's a trap, right? <laughs> you already know what's happening, right? You're going to find out you're not keeping the law as written according to scripture. So you're not following the laws of Moses, period. You're going to find out that you, you, you've chosen to ignore other laws that are also the laws of Moses. So you're not a law keeper, right? So I put it out there. This is what you're going to find. So how is it? You're, you're a law keeper that you follow the laws of Moses and you don't follow it according to the letter of the law. That is a hypocrite. Not picking a fight, never was. Showing you what a hypocrite is so that you won't be one. Right? Lord, if, if the laws say I need to do these things and it's impossible, then what should I be doing today, right? Israel had to make pilgrimages to Israel when they were not in the land. But you can't even do that. Uh, so you say, oh, I'm in the land of my captivity. Yeah, you are, but you, you, you can get a ticket and go to Israel. You could do that, <laughs> you yeah. know. But, you know, we've been down that road before. And so, oh, one more thing. Um, I, I, my plan is to also get into the the, the war scrolls, uh, and we'll talk about it. It's just that it's it's a big it's it's a big job, and so it might take a while. Peace and blessings, Israel. Your captivity is ending.